is going on with you guys? This is Samuel Leggett representing JVS here for another DC Black Film Festival 2019 movie review. Um, this one is going to be called We Want to Make It. And it starts off with uh, IG Live randomly going with two kids, you know, just automatically just kind of like riffing about like, we're going to make it, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I started to realize like this is actually in my home location uh which is in washington dc i am i live in the dmv area and um i was kind of like okay the music was kind of really dope and when they started to actually go and perform start doing little covers and i was like okay this is an organic documentary now this movie uh was short it was actually directed by albert uh albert tong um and i think that he did something very magical and special with this short um because it was is very natural in the sense that it never felt scripted. It never felt like, okay, well, this was like, well, he put his hand in here and he was like, well, maybe you should do this or I'm gonna help you do that. Like it went through different seasons of time. Now, some of them were actually a little rough because there were times where they were really prospering. There was times where they were really making it. And then it was just like a moment randomly where they were kind of like, okay, well, We've been running trains and doing these performances. I'm tired of doing trains. This is the last time we have to do trains. We're gonna be going and doing tours around like 21 cities or whatever to all of a sudden they back on the train. And that was an emotional, not granted, I'm, it looked like I'm starting crying, I promise you, I've never crying. Um, but uh, there was a moment that was captured, cinematography is really good because it's really authentic. It doesn't feel any grainy. Like it feels actually really natural. I think it was documented very well. It, it speaks to the core. This is very much their story. It's not Albert speaking through to try to push you to emphasize with them or feel remorseful for them. Like no, it's, it's it, whatever you feel is organically what they're really giving you, what they're really conveying to you. It's very different because um, whereas Tehran. Um, he's very much so a love of music and really wants to make it, but he has love for his family, love for his sister who works with him. Even kind of had like a small little backstory of how they got connected together. And then his sister even in dialogue kind of put like, you know, I would be afraid to do this if it wasn't for him. Like I wouldn't do this basically if it wasn't him doing it, but we, us together, we can do it. Um, there's one shot that was done really well where it kind of was like the bucket and the bucket had both of their names. And I was kind of like, that's their names. Uh, the sister's name is Jordan. Um, I'm assuming they have um, two different fathers and the same mother because uh, Jordan's last name is Stewart and uh, Teron's last name is Jones. Uh, one thing I'm gonna say is I feel like I've seen them, like legitimately. I don't know if it was on the Metro stop, but it might've been somewhere maybe around DuPont Circle or somewhere in Washington DC and they are very talented. Um, one of the things I thought was really hard to watch was again when they kind of got like a setback and then the stepfather kind of came in and was kind of talking about like all his promises, this person said they were going to do and then kind of get I like, got a kickback from it. Then there was one moment where uh, Tron was you know trying to perform on the train and it was during a Nationals game really big uh, it was no, it was a Capitals game. It was a Capitals game. Sorry, um, a big hockey team. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, somebody was like, "No, stop that!" And I was kind of like, "Oh, this person might be belligerent or maybe drunk." Like, no, it was a racially induced slur, and they kept on pushing him. He was kind of like, "You better stop it!" And like, they literally got an altercation. He lost some of his money, and just it was, it was, it was really hard to actually really watch. But the funny thing about it was. I don't know if Albert was the cinematographer and the director. I feel like he had to have been to be there because whoever the cinematographer was literally stopped Tehran from getting in trouble because if he hadn't have jumped in, it could have gotten really bad. Even though everybody on the train was trying to stop it, it could have went any way you wanted to. And it's kind of like, it, it, it plays through the medium where there are people that are in New York and all these other locations that are just trying to make it. Like There was one moment where Tehran was talking like, yo, I can't wait till I get twenty dollars so I can eat. And he's kinda like like school's food's terrible. But I mean you never know people's actual circumstances. I don't know the you know, the confounds of and again, Albert as a director doesn't like play to that. Like he doesn't go and like, oh here's the sob story, do this, do that. But it does make you want to um rally behind them. Uh one of the most interesting magical moments is when 
they got to the um, the Nashville, Tennessee location to be able to perform, as well as when they got to perform at uh, the Smithsonian Festival uh, and got to have their mom there. That was actually a really special shot. It was very well um, done. But before that happened, um, I don't know who introduced them to, I think it was uh, Sweet Spot Studio. Uh, whoever the person was as a producer of music brought both of them into the studio and actually let them lay down tracks and talk with them and coach them. And it, it was very good because one thing it showed me was, and I think this is conveyed very well through this documentary, is that the, this, this young man is only 14 years old and this young girl is only 12. And they're, they're literally living as adults essentially going out there making a living for their family while going and doing work and also while trying to um, make it as a career entertainers you know what I'm saying and maybe not so much the younger sister but she's very much so a part of it and it's kind of like both of them they took it was two different it was three different moments that happened that that humanized the whole entire experience that the real groundwork and it was one was when uh, Jordan was putting her head outside of the car window. It's like, this, you know, like somebody asked like, what's, what's going on? Like this air feels so good. Like they're so used to being on trains and just performance and performance and performance. They didn't even have a chance to even go and be kids and just go out. And not just that, like even going and trying to drive around DC, it's just, it's not plausible. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not something like is the best thing to do or try to do even in New York. Uh, so being in the car, just being outside and having your hair kind of going with a good breeze. When they were at the house with the guy with the studio, they were just kind of outside and like not around with the traffic, but the people just kind of just relaxing, just trying to be kids. Like they were even playing badminton outside and just having fun, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like those things go a long ways, even more so than this man helping uh, Teron and his sister go and find music production through what they were trying to do, but just giving them something organic outside of the norm of the city and the cityscape to be able to really just kind of be kids is very essential, it's very key because it allows them to be able to hope and be rejuvenated and, and just move into that lane, you know what I'm saying? And I think, uh, I think the, the movie conveyed that, the documentary conveyed that very well, to my personal opinion. Um, so I give all the credit definitely to that, but one thing I personally want, because this is a real story, I want to see them do covers. I think that they should create a YouTube channel. Uh, and have somebody going and following them around uh, recording when they go and do covers maybe on site or maybe if they can get access back to the Sweet Spot studio and just lay down some covers like lay down some audio covers like for real for real Pentatonix started off with stuff like that like um, One Last Night uh, it's another rock group just the covers and so many others um, what's my man's name uh, Kurt Snyder you know what I'm saying like literally off of covers and I think that they would play to that medium very well especially how young they are and how talented musically Tehran is and how beautifully uh, Jordan sings I think that they could make some really good covers and I actually would be behind it anyway hope you guys enjoyed this review make sure you stay tuned for more DC BFF reviews alright <laughs> and coverage keep it locked JVS we gonna stop have a blessing guys peace